so we studied the concept of linear momentum and the principle that linear momentum is conserved in fact we found that conservation principle gives us a fantastic tool to predict a lot of things in real life uh, a good example could be what would happen to two cars with a certain mass and velocity if they were to collide so just the way we have compared linear motion variables with angular variables we can compare the linear momentum with its counterpart in angular motion that is angular momentum and this is often denoted by the symbol l now the study of angular momentum also gives us a window into understanding the various real life situations like how ballet dancers are able to deliver amazing turns and how an ice skater can twist and turn to give those magical performances in fact we'll study this part as well in the subsequent lessons so consider a particle of mass m having a linear momentum mv and here it is denoted by the symbol p and this particle moves through point a in the xy plane then we can say the angular momentum of this particle about the origin o can be given as the cross product of r and p so we can write angular momentum l is equal to the cross product of r and p which in turn can be written as m into the cross product of r and v so here r is the position vector of the particle as it moves relative to o so the position vector r rotates about o however what you should remember is that the particle does not necessarily need to rotate about o to have an angular momentum about o so in other words even if it is even if the particle is passing by o it can have an angular momentum about o so this is a very important point to remember while understanding angular momentum now the unit of angular momentum is kilogram meters per second square or you could say it's joules second now we know that the vector l or the angular momentum would be perpendicular to both the vectors r and vector p because it is a cross product but what will be the direction of this vector will it be upwards or downwards so in this diagram you can see this is the z vector and this is the x vector and this is the y vector so what we have to determine is whether it's in the upward direction or the positive direction of z axis or it is in the negative direction of z axis so to find the direction of vector l we slide vector p towards the origin till its tail is aligned with the tail of vector r then what we do is we use the right hand rule for vector product and sweep the fingers from vector r towards vector p so notice the position of the hand this is the way your hand should be then the direction of the thumb gives the direction of the angular momentum l so the magnitude of l can be written as r m v sin phi where phi is a smaller angle between the vector p and vector r and just the way we manipulated uh, the force vector and position vector in the earlier lesson to represent torque in various ways we could just do the same thing to represent the value of angular momentum in various ways so we can write and you'll need to refer to the earlier lesson that the angular momentum can be written as the product of r into the perpendicular component of p which therefore is equal to r into m into the perpendicular component of v and you could also write l as equal to the product of r perpendicular into p which is equal to r perpendicular m into v now what you should remember here is that r perpendicular is a perpendicular distance between o and the extension of vector p in the reverse direction